Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to retouch this photo. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in Paris and I'm excited because I'm at Photoshop World. It's an amazing event, it's twice a year, this week it's in Atlanta and I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I make two tutorials per week. If you want to get them for free every week, all you have to do is click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to get over 100 raw files on all my free stuff, just click here and you will subscribe to my newsletter and you will get access to this page which will give you hundreds of raw files from all over the world for free. In last episode, I showed you some instruction on how to do lone exposure photography. If you are into this type of photography, check it out. That's some of the final results. It's pretty awesome to do. So in this episode, I'm going to show you the whole basic retouching on how to create this specific look. And then in the next episode, I'll show you how to add the mist on the, on the water. That's the final result. Okay, also very good news. I have a sale going on my website until the 15th of April where you can get 40% on everything. This has always been popular and I'm putting it back until the 15th of April. All right, guys. So let me show you the tutorial right now. So this is the final result we're going for. Uh, you know, a nice photo of a park in Florida with uh, some mystery mist on the on the water. And it was a photo that was pretty popular on 500px. And I gave a special look to the sky and I want to explain you how I did this. So for the first part of this tutorial, we're going to do uh, retouch this panorama. I shot this with a 35 millimeter. And I was in portrait mode uh, as usual in manual mode. So that was 1 60th second at f5.0 ISO 160. Uh, first photo, second photo, third photo, fourth photo, fifth photo. So same exposure, same speed, same ISO, all five photos. And uh, shot with a Sony A7R. So each photo is 36 million pixels long, uh, wide. So it's uh, pretty crazy. So let's retouch the first one. So I'm going to open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. This you know by now, and that's going to bring all the details in the sky. Maybe on this one, not completely the shadows. I'm, do the, I'm going to do a bit of white point, very little, because you see I get clipping. I'm pressing Alt to when I go on the right, so I don't want any clipping. So I'm going to back it down, and I'm just going to bring a little bit of darkness. But you see the whole thing that's going to make a difference in this photo is what I call the double processing. So right now we just do regular processing. So on regular processing, let's jump in and do some, uh, let's do some details. Let's do some details. I'm going to do some serious sharpening. Um, noise reduction, there's hardly any noise. So I'm going to go directly, maybe like, yeah, 90, 100%, 100% of, no, of uh, sharpening is going to make it very sharp. That's pretty cool. And um, maybe I'm going to go on daylight. Uh, on the white balance, bring back a bit of blue and add a little bit of magenta, just a little touch of magenta, something like that. Okay. Then I'm going to select all photos. I'm going to click on sync and synchronize. So I'm going to synchronize all that. But you see, uh, the problem is that as I go on the right, it's getting brighter and brighter. So I don't want that. I want to correct that before going to photo merge. And that's the problem because I shot manual and the, the left part of the panel was a bit darker. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lower a bit the exposure on the second photo. Then I'm going to reselect everything, click on sync and, re and rethink what I did. Then I'm going to move to the next photo. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get this even lower. And I'm going to sync on the other photo. I just do it. That's just my methodology. And now I'm going to stop. Yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe on this one, I'm going to go even lower on the exposure and sync the result with the last one. This way, my exposure is gradually uh, falling to the right, but I want to get the detail in the sky. It's very important for me. So now I'm going to select all the photos, right click, edit, Merge to Panorama in Photoshop. Now that's going to make a huge file because each file is 7,000 pixels long. So it's going to be a lot of data for Photoshop and I don't need such a big file. I mean, unless you want to print like a, uh, I'm, going to, I'm just going to click on OK, blend image together, and that's it. That's all I do. I don't do anything special on Photo Merge. And I'm going to put on Pause because it's going to take like about a minute to merge everything. So Photoshop did its magic. 
what I'm going to do now is press Command E or right click on the selected layers and click Merge Layer so that everything is merged. And before I do anything, uh, look, let me show you something. I'm going to go to Image, Image Size. And the problem is that it's a 10,000 pixel wide image and I don't need so big. So I'm going to put it at 5,000. Otherwise, anything that I'm going to do with it is going to take forever because it's such a big file. All right, so now I got it a bit lower. I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm going to go and see if I can get a bit of sky back. Uh, so I'm going to press Command T for free transform and press at the, pressing the Command key, I'm going to use and move each corner of the photo until I get something that I like. I'm trying to, uh, I have some distortion here. Mm, you know what? First, let's get the, let's get the, um, I'm gonna press a crop tool and I wanna get the horizontal line straight up. So I'm gonna do something like that. Make sure the horizontal line is straight up, that's cool. And uh, maybe crop a little bit. Uh, something, let's find a crop. You, cropping is an art, you have to find something that, that, that you like. Okay, this is good. Yeah, maybe a bit like that. Okay, so I'm gonna press enter. So now I crop this and I'm gonna do command T. Now I've got a reason to which is pretty straight. And I think I'm gonna just use a command key to, I want to move this tree was a bit like this, maybe here a little bit and there all right something like that okay now i'm missing here a little bit of ground here on top so first i'm going to crop what i don't need i'm going to crop here something like that and maybe something like that all right so so and then i have to find a way to recover the sky so i'm going to take this off this layer which is beneath it i'm not going to touch it but you see i'm missing a bit this and i'm missing a bit this so you know the trick on that i've showed it a, a few times you take the magic wand tool make sure that contiguous is not on and i'm going to select the transparent part of it so i have a selection of what is transparent then i'm going to go to selection modify expand about 20 pixel so now my selection is going to be a bit bigger than what I'm lacking. And now I'm going to go to Edit, Fill, and use this Content Aware technology, which is amazing, and see if it does a good job. Uh, it might take some of the tree and put it in the sky, which I wouldn't like, in which case uh, I have a way around that. But let's see, it's kind of like the lottery. Uh, you know, you never get the same result, you see. I can redo it right now, Edit, Fill, content aware and it's going to give a different result you see how it took some of the reflection here and put it in the sky so if that happens and um, i showed this trick a couple of times i'm going to show it to you again but right now what you can try is try you see up oh, i tried to redo a command aware and it did a pretty good job i have something a bit weird there but that's when i then i take the um, stem tool and uh, press the alt key and i'm just gonna yeah copy some of the sky here yeah that's the good thing about skies it's so random that you know you can get away with a, a lot of cloning without anybody noticing anything okay i'm pretty happy i just find that this tree is still a bit too much crooked so command t and i'm just going to press again the com uh, that and i want to make this tree a little bit more or i remember how it was i think it was a bit more like that okay so that's pretty, pretty cool. Now I'm going to take again the crop tool and I'm just going to make it a bit more panoramic. All right. I don't want to cut more than that. Yeah, that's fine. So, so now we've got the photo that's, that, is, that is merged. That's the merge result. So now I'm going to go to file and I'm going to do close, save. And this is going to... Uh, Oh, I made a mistake here. There's a little bit of a mistake here. I uh, that's what I, that happens when you do wrong cloning. So anyway, it's going to put the photo into uh, Photoshop. Now, one good trick is when you make a mistake like this, you can just right-click Edit, Edit, Edit in Adobe Photoshop. And then instead of using the Edit with Copy Lightroom or Edit Copy, do Edit Original. And it's going to bring you back in Photoshop exactly where you were. And I will be able to correct just that problem. That's something people have been asking me about, so I wanted to show it to you. 
So I did a mistake on purpose. No, no kidding. I just I did a mistake, but it was good to show you how you can handle it. So I'm going to press Alt to sample here, and I'm just going to yeah take that out. All right. So I'm going to click save it, and now it's going to update it in in um, in Lightroom. Now you have to understand something is that when you go whenever you go out of Lightroom and you go into Photoshop, you're creating a whole new file. And this file, once it's re-imported into Lightroom, you can do what we call double processing. Let me show you what that means. That means it got back into Photoshop, and now if I do shadows and highlights, I get a complete different result. Now, this is way too much. It's, it's looking a bit HDR, but it's because of the double processing. So if you're going for like a very HDR result like this, you know, that's, that's one way of doing it. You know, that's a bit too dark, uh, but I don't want that. So I'm not going to put clarity. And I'm not going to put the shadow so much. I'm going to go. I'm going to be uh, very gentle. Yeah, I'm just going to do something like that. Now the problem that I have, and that's something that I have, is um, whenever I take a photo and the sky is like blue and, and the lights are kind of common, you know, it for me something is missing. So uh, I like to, uh, gi you know, on this one, I, I want to give it some kind of uh, split toning. Split toning is going to put a color in uh, any. In the shadows and put another color in the highlights and i like that so i'm going to go to the split toning here and uh, on the u i think i try i noted that around 38 was kind of cool which is like a, a pretty warm color in the highlights anything which is bright and saturation i think i put around 32. you see what that does is that it makes anything which is a bit bright a bit warm okay now on the shadows i'm going to go to about here 234 i'm going to go into a uh into a blue cool color and saturation around 40 i think this is what i went for and that's going to give it a little look that's going to give it like a yeah a specific look now i think the look is not strong enough so i'm going to add an overall vibrance and saturation to it and maybe a little bit of clarity and lower a little bit the exposure something like this and um yeah, I kind of like the look that it gives. Maybe not that much vibrance, just a little bit like that. And let's do a bit of dodge and burning to uh, get the, the trees a bit more interesting. So we take a, a brush and, uh, you know, we have a bit of exposure and I just want to add a bit of exposure. Make sure your feather is at 100% flow and density on, on this one, on dodge and burn. I think I'm going to go around like 80, 80. And I just want to complexify a bit the light, make it bit brighter here you know there's going to be mist here later on coming so i'm going to make this a little bit brighter maybe here like this okay and uh let's make it not so bright a new brush maybe add a bit of brush here in the sky to get the sky to come a bit more okay new brush let's add some brush in the trees not that much on the tree okay and i'm just relighting it you know, let's fake uh, some kind of rays coming like this. Because the sun was coming like this. Something like that. Maybe add some warm in this in this sun ray. A little less strong. Okay, that's a bit the idea. Um, that's a bit the idea. Now I'm going to close the photo by making a graded filter here on top. So I'm doing a graded filter, but I'm going to go lower the exposure. Just gonna add that something like that here, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I just want to get yeah the top and bottom a bit dark. So that's kind of like the first thing. Maybe add a bit of magenta on the overall photo. That's a bit the first feeling. So that's my first retouching. I already love the result. Uh, you know, it's very it's got a mood to it, and it was very popular. But next week we're gonna add some mist like this you know over the water and totally fake and i'm going to show you how to do that in photoshop but that's going to be next week okay i hope you like this tutorial and i'll see you in the next episode so we can add some little mist on the water goodbye and see you soon